Well, good afternoon. I'll uh, call to order the January 21st meeting of the Oklahoma City Riverfront Redevelopment Authority. Uh, item two is items from the chairman, and I don't have anything today. Item three is the minutes from the December 17th meeting. Are there any changes? Move approval. Cast your vote. It passes unanimously. Item four is the consent docket. We have an oil and gas revenue report and a river corridor events update. Any questions on either one of those? Move approval of both items. Cast your vote. It passes unanimously. Item five are the primary agenda items. Item A is to receive the Oklahoma River Maintenance Projects update. Jim, you got in for us today? A little bit. Um, right now we've lowered the western basin eight feet to begin dredging operations in there. Um, we had some reports of sediment uh, affecting boat operations there. Um, the contractors are mobilizing, ready to move in now. Um, depending on the weather, how much rain we get in the next couple of days. Um, but we expect that to take about 60 days of work, and then we'll be able to go ahead and raise the basin back up. Um, we're coordinating with the river users right now to ensure that they're all aware of the operation. Um, the only other item I have on here is uh, just our cleanup. We removed 0.3 tons of debris from Western Basin. A uh, small amount kind of reflects the fact that we haven't had any significant rainfall for a while. Questions? Any questions? The report. Motion to receive. Cast your vote. Pass it unanimously. Thank, Thank you. you. Item B is to receive the quarterly Oklahoma River Cruisers update. Jeannie. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and Trustees. Well, the key word this season was silt. It's the fine grained plastic particles that are carried down the river by the rain that cause the uh, buildup of silt in the basins for which they're doing the dredging. So this is uh, a report of the cancellations that we had. May and June, we had cancellations because of the rain that brought the silt. Uh, and in September, we had a cancellation because of a, a minor dam failure that was resolved fairly quickly. To give you an idea of cancellations over time, You'll see in 2011, 12, and 13, most of those cancellations were due to lock and dam failures. <clears throat> We've had very little infrastructure problems since then. The spike in 2015 was also a heavy rain event that brought a lot of debris uh, down the river. But as you can see, it, cancellations were slowly growing until 2019 when we had 255 cancel trips due to the silt accumulation in the river. 2019 started strong. It looked like it was going to be a good season until we hit the heavy rain in May and June. Uh, we had a rum lock failure in September. Uh, COTPA and HMS staff were confident the ferry schedule that we've been running for the past couple of years is, is efficient and is effective. It works with our existing budget. The focus in 2020 will be on charters, trying to grow that charter business back up to a, a hefty level that generates revenue that helps us support the operation. Riders per service hour, this is a metric that we use in the leading for results application and to let us know how efficiently the operation is running. They were up 30% from 2018 and down 31% from 2017. Some of this decline is because we changed our structure. We used to run evening ferry service. And it was very popular. We had a lot of riders. So then we decided, you know what? Let's make that a specialty cruise. Charge a little more for it. It's very popular. And this gives us more revenue to help support the service. So that's why you see that decline in 2018. And then it picked up back up again in 2019. To give you an update on our uh, ferry boat grants, uh, as I mentioned before, we did the security cameras at exchange and on the boats uh, last, well, about a year ago. Um, Meridian Landing Pavilion, we are looking to have that project awarded once COTPA approves the bid selection at our February 7th meeting. River Park, that was awarded uh, just last week, uh, the January 11th meeting. So things are moving along. The only 
item left to be addressed in that grant are the terminal upgrades. Incidentally, we did move the Meridian Landing Pavilion project out of this grant and into a state of good repair grant to free up more money for us to do some of these other projects. All of this goes through Federal Transit Administration approval and, and we're good to go. So one of the other projects that we need to do are these fenders. These were installed in 2007. This is inside the lock and it keeps the boat from banging against the concrete wall. Wouldn't be good for the wall, wouldn't be good for the boat either. But as you can see, they're pretty worn. Uh, some of them have whole sections missing. As we speak, they're being replaced with a more durable product, a little heavier material. It's still a rubberized material. Um, and we hope to have that done by Thursday. Other projects we'll be doing, we'll be doing some improvements at Regatta Park, improvements to the kiosk, improvements to the landing, and hopefully to replace the stacked wall that uh, seems to want to fall in periodically. So those are the projects that we're working on, and we're fortunate to have this grant money to be able to do this. And with just a reminder, it's never too early to book that private charter. We know you all have plans for parties and events and whatnot. We can accommodate up to 32 people comfortably on a charter, and I would encourage you all to, to look at us as an option uh, for your next event. And with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. I do have just the question going back to the canceled trips. Um, I, know, I know just looking anecdotally at the um, the years, I can think, oh yeah, 2015 was like a really bad year for rain. Do you all truly track like there were this many rain events and that was like a direct causation of the cancellations? We do. Okay. Um, and when there's a, a very long gap, uh, there's a website, uh, Wonderground. I don't know if you've ever use that was weather underground and they give you historical data so if I look at um, say if something happens in August of this year and why is this so much less there more than it was August last year I can go back and actually pull the weather data from prior years and do a one-on-one -on -one comparison okay thank you you mentioned at one time the ferrying was very popular and we went to the on private charter um, is that a good change is it yeah. something we should revert back to the, the ferrying system that was really popular? Or what are your thoughts? Well, uh, okay. Um, at one time, uh, FTA grants were awarded based on the number of riders that you have. Um, the, the actual whole program is riders and cars. Obviously, we don't do cars. They since changed the formula. So the minimum per state has now been established. And being the only ferry system in the state, we get that minimum amount and no longer have to push for more riders, more riders. We do want to maintain that commuter aspect that we have with the hotels at Meridian, where we bring a lot of, a lot of foreign visitors, frankly, uh, from Meridian into the downtown area. So we, but that's a lot of day traffic. The evening traffic, honestly, these were people just going out to have a cocktail. They weren't really commuters. It wasn't really ferry usage. So why not charge more, bring more revenue in, and, and bill it for what it really is. Thank you. Any other questions? Jeannie, what transportation do we have for those that ride from Meridian down to Bricktown? Is there bus service that will take them back to Meridian once they've ferried? There is. They could connect with the, with the bus service. Okay. And we make that very public? We do. We have bus schedules on the, on the boats. And Captains know what, crews know what bus number to pick up to get there. For me, the ideal trip is to be staying at Meridian, ride the ferry into Bricktown, catch the streetcar, go up to Midtown, get on a Spokies bike, go to a bus stop, maybe the transit center, thing that the transit center, get on the bus, and then you've used all of the embarked services in one trip. Any other questions? Thank you, Jeannie. I need a motion to receive that report. That's your vote. Passes unanimously. Item C is to receive a presentation on the Greenway Trail connection on the Oklahoma River.
you give us your name and who you're with, please? Yes. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, trustees. My name is Russell Kent. I'm with MacArthur Associated Consultants. Uh, I'll be giving a presentation on the Greenway Trail. Okay. Let me know when it's ready to get ready to roll. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, so we've been working with the city for the past uh, four months on the Greenway Trail, so it's still in the relatively early stages. Uh, we just completed an alignment study, and we've identified where the new trail will go. The next step is to move into design. So I'm going to try and give you an update on what we've done and where we're going. Um, so the intent of this trail, it's one of the last remaining connections in the overall Oklahoma City trail system. Um, and the intent is to provide connectivity along the Oklahoma River, connecting the South Grand Trail, the Tinker Drake Trail, and the Katy Trail. And you'll see that in some maps here in a few moments. Uh, it's funded by the 2007 Bond Project. And in addition to the trail, there will be amenities, parking, lighting, wayfinding, all of those associated with the trail. Wrong way. There we go. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so that map right there is really demonstrating. You can see the black circle in the bottom right corner. That is where this Greenway Trail will be. You can see that it's one of the last remaining connections of the Grand Loop that the Oklahoma City Trail System is trying to create. Um, and it's going to go from about Lincoln on the river all the way to the Katy Trail, which begins on Northeast 4th Street, which you'll see in more details. But you can really see from that image how this is one of the last remaining uh, points of connection. Uh, so this area, as you're well aware, is full of lots of things that are going to impact the trail, lots of different groups and entities. The American Indian Cultural Center is a big one, the Boathouse District, of course, all the way along the river, very close to Bricktown, different parks as well through there. So a big part of this project, so let me just talk about the budget real quick. Uh, so it's funded by the 2007 bond, uh, budgeted about $4.2 million from uh, the city funds. Uh, the construction estimate at the moment is $4.1 million, um, but we do have lots of alternate things that may increase that budget depending on availability of additional funds. We can get to that, pedestrian bridges and things like that. Uh, point out that 1% of those funds are available for public art as well. So that's another consideration as we, we look at this. Um, so the, one of the big, the big things early on is just talking to all these entities and groups, um, stakeholder uh, discussions, finding out who has a, who, what people's ideas are on the trail, where it should go, where it shouldn't go. So a lot of the things we're doing very early on is talking to all these different groups. Um, and we've met with everyone that we know of in the area um, and try to gather all of their opinions and ideas about this new trail. Uh, and you can see it there, and here in a moment we'll go through the alignment and you can see where it will go, but it'll, it'll follow both the north and the south side of the river, like I said, from the Boathouse District all the way to 4th Street and then going back to the uh, west and connecting to the Katy Trail. So this is just running from west to east and you are seeing a little more detail. We won't just go through these a few seconds at a time, but it'll go around the, uh, the Boathouse District area. The intent in this area is to try and circumnavigate the best we can around the proposed development. There's a lot of things being uh, proposed in here, as you're well aware, um, and we don't want to interfere with that. So you can see we're going on the north edge of the, of the trail there, uh, of the Boathouse District, I'm sorry, sorry and uh, trying to avoid some of that development. Um, there is an, an option for a potential pedestrian bridge over that water body there. That's one of those things that is, will be optional if there is additional funding, but if not, we can go around the outside of it. Um, just some pictures of that area, very familiar with that. There's lots of open space right now, but potential development down the road, so you want to stay away from that. Um, and then moving further east, uh, we'll be close to the river wherever we can, avoiding some of these water bodies north and south side of the river. There are some areas where we're going to need pedestrian bridges. Um, on the south side of the river, as we continue going down, the American Indian Cultural Center is a big component. There's lots of development planned there. We've had many discussions with them, um, and we've, we're building the trail in conjunction with, with, with what they have planned. What we will likely do in that area is have a much wider section of trail, similar to Lake Hefner, 20, 25 feet wide, uh, where you can have pedestrian traffic and bicycles, and people can access the 
cultural center from it, and they've got lots of ideas about ways that uh, they could utilize the trail for different events and things like that. Um, see on the north side, there is a pedestrian bridge over that water body. That's one of those ones. There's no other way around it, so there will be at least one or two pedestrian bridges, no matter what. Additional ones will be optional. Um, continuing west, uh, you can see a connectivity to the existing Eagle Lake Trail. That's uh, that Southeastern Avenue right there. That's one of the points where the trail will connect over the river. And you can see the picture on the right-hand side. That's the existing sidewalk on Easton. The intent is to, we're not going to widen the bridge itself, but we are going to reconfigure that bridge so that guardrail will come out a little bit. Right now it's about eight feet wide. We can move it out and reduce the shoulders in the roadway a little bit and get 10 or 12 feet of wide trail all the way along east in a much safer spot to cross the river. Um, and just showing some of the pictures of the existing facilities we're tying to Eagle Lake Trail and the American Indian. So moving further on west, on the, the south side of the river is the existing Eagle Lake Trail. So we'll connect to that so that people can continue to follow the south end of the river. Uh, but the new trail is that green line there. So we'll follow the north side of the river um, all the way from Easton um, underneath. You'll see it a little bit further on here, connecting up to 4th Street. Um, the blue line you can see, uh, we're referring to that as the um, Grand Lake Connector, Connector Trail. Um, that's just an additional connectivity, and it will tie into that uh, existing parking lot uh, just south of Reno there. Um, and we're going to utilize an existing railroad underpass. You can see that in that center bridge that, that is there right now. And we'll be able to go under the railroad of the trail and provide additional connection um, from that trail onto the Eagle Lake Trail and then ultimately the Greenway Trail. And you can see that again there, that blue line. So the green line continues on the north side of the river and ties all the way up to 4th Street. That corner there with 4th Street and the river, that'll be a, an area where we're going to construct a trailhead parking lot um, before the trail will continue traveling west along Northeast 4th Street. It'll cross over I-35 and then tie into the Katy Trail. And that's the end of it. So that's, it's about five and a half miles in length, $4.2 million, as I mentioned. These are some images along 4th Street. Um, you can see on the right-hand side, that right-hand picture, that's the bridge of uh, I-35. So we'll be doing a similar thing that I mentioned at Easton. We're not going to widen the bridge, but we're going to reconfigure it and get the guardrail as far away from the edge as we can so we can have the widest trail section possible. Um, this is just identifying some of the amenities, some of the locations for public art. Again, we're in the early stages, so we're trying to identify potential locations for different things, but um, there are many spots along here that would be great for um, not only parking and benches, but utilizing the views, uh, lookout uh, locations along the river. Uh, we can have boardwalks that extend from the trail and get closer to the river. So there's a number of things that we could do, and it's all going to come down to budget and prioritizing these based on the needs of uh, the city and at the various different entities along the river. This is just a quick look at who we've met with to date. We've met with other people as well, but these are just some of the main stakeholder meetings. We've met with the Boathouse District, Oklahoma City Bicycle Society, the Riverfront Authority, um, the American Indian Cultural Center, BNSF, there's some railroads on the eastern end, as well as the uh, advisory committee, the Trails Advisory Committee. Um, schedule. So we are pretty early on. We've submitted 15% design, which is basically here's where the alignment could go and the various different options. We've uh, discussed that with the city, and I think we have an alignment that everyone's in agreement with. Yeah, that is proposed to go to city council in February next month. Once that's been approved, then we'll actually be able to start the design and start finalizing what it'll look like. And that's all I have. So with that, I'll take any questions. Yes. I noticed on your list <clears throat> list of places where you've been to share the ideas mm -hmm. that the Trails Advisory Committee was not on that list. I think it was. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah, the last one. We met with them in December. We gave a presentation similar to this. No, you're good. 
Um, and we just listened to their feedback and took it in. So yeah, we did meet with them. Um, I was I was curious I, uh, as far as who you're meeting with. Uh, um, I was curious whether the Douglas Park Recreational Center was part of who you all had met with. Well, not directly, but we obviously working with the city all the time. So we're, we're working with the Parks Department, uh -huh. Melinda and Brandon, and I know they're very familiar with the different parks. So uh -huh. not directly with that group, but <coughs> sort of. Yeah, well, I'd be curious questions. if there are any opportunities to meet with people who access and use that recreational center to see if, you mm. know, get, have this put in front of them as well to get their input, just yeah. so they would be so close to it and making sure that whatever yeah. connections we have to it, even if it's just signage or something, mm -hmm. kind of wayfinding from that area. We'll definitely have signage. I know that. And we did talk about it because we brought that up too pretty early on about connecting through Douglas Park and that, that center. And uh, I know that it was talked about. Um, and I think there were ideas about having some level of connectivity with the trail. Even if it's not the mainline trail, it's a spur that goes off to it. So we have thought about it. Yeah. Any other questions? Very good. Thank you. I need a motion to receive that report. Second. Ask your vote. Passes unanimously. Item D is a contract renewal for professional engineering services with Triad Design Group, our on-call engineer. This is the uh, last of a renewal period that we uh, agreed to. So they got uh, this one. If you renew this one, then next year it'll have to go back out for bid again, which is a normal procedure. So any questions on the renewal? Cast your vote. Passes unanimously. You're off the hook, Dennis. I had a big long list of questions here, but I, I know people are wanting to get on out of here. So. <laughs> Item E is a lease agreement with the Riverfront Authority and Mr. Steve Allen for agricultural activities on our property near Sooner Road between 23rd and 36th. This is, a, he has leased this for some time. David, this is the one we're doing a short one this time to reset the renewal, is that correct? Huh? Yeah. Any questions on renewing this lease? Cast your vote. Passes unanimously. Item F is the first renewal of a lease agreement with the Riverfront Authority and Mr. Samuel Owens for cattle grazing on property north of the river near the former uh, city police equine center. Again, this is, he's been doing this for a while. Any questions on? Cast your vote. It passes unanimously. Item G is a resolution approving a payment of 25000 from the Riverfront Authority to the city parks and rec department for turf maintenance during the 2020 mowing season at the former Prairie Park sand plant near 50th and Midwest. This is the old uh, Delisi area that they uh, reclaimed for us and, and um, we want to keep that mowed down and uh, hopefully Doug can start doing something out there at some point in time. So we, we did this uh, mowing last year also, by the way. Any questions on it? Second. Cast your vote. Passes unanimously. Item six is a claims docket. Any questions? Cast your vote. It passes unanimously. Item seven is uh, additional items, comments by staff. Doug, anything other than what's in your written report? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Doug Copper, Director of Parks and Recreation for the record. Uh, I, I really don't have anything to add. I, I just want you to know that uh, your trust specialist continues to work with the Delisi folks about possibly uh, finding a new location for sand mining. So we, we have expectations to hopefully come forward with, with uh, some kind of thought processes to present to Ms. Kathy's uh, subcommittee for, for review and possible further actions by the, by the trust as a whole. But we're, we're looking forward to a, a drier 
season so that the river cruisers can function properly and we can have activities uh, uh, happening on the river. Uh, I do want to tell you about one, one activity. We have a special event that's not in the report. We have a sp special event promoter that has come to us after this was, was uh, signed by myself to talk about an event during the 4th of July period this year at, at Wiley Post Park. Uh, it's anticipated that possibly 10,000 people may attend this activity. Uh, it's a film festival. So uh, we're working with them to try to help them find solutions for parking. Uh, as you know, the Manuel Perez Park will be under construction. Uh, during this period, we've used uh, you know, that leftover field over there on, the, on the, uh, man, uh, the west side of Manuel Perez for overflow parking for other events. We won't have that opportunity to provide that uh, for this group this year because of the construction. And of course, Wiley Post will be under construction next year. Um, so uh, most of our events, including Cinco de Mayo, might have to find a new location uh, just for that one year while uh, Wiley Post is under construction for its its revitalization as well. So a lot of things going on. We're uh, Like I said, we're looking for a, a dry season for a change. Be happy to answer any questions. Otherwise, I'd accept it as written. For uh, some of our newer members, all the reason we keep touching back on the sand plants with Delisi is that was our greatest source of revenue for a number of years when Delisi was pulling sand out. And um, they, the area that they were using uh, got to the point it was not usable anymore. And uh, they searched the river one time and um, didn't find any others. So we, we've lost that revenue. So the f fact that they may look again and pull something out again is, is uh, good news for us on the revenue side. So. Thank you all. Quick question. Sir. I noticed we had a uh, people using Crystal Lake Park for unauthorized use here that you discovered late December. How do you feel as we move forward about being able to provide for safety and security in Crystal Lake? Well, we're, uh, we're pursuing the thought processes that our staff will be able to program out there. Some of our summer camps that do outdoor activities, we're going to have them go there to use the assets that, that are available out there. We, uh, we are securing the restrooms the best we can uh, from the, uh, the uh, neighbors inhabiting them uh, as we talk. We're also, as I, I, I continue the conversation with the archery folks about their continued use, if we can figure out how to make that activity work, then those are some valued eyes and ears for us out there to keep an eye on things. We want to make sure it's a safe environment for the archery people. The uh, appropriate measures are taken to protect our neighbors that, that uh, uh, are within the environs of that park. So uh, a lot of activities, but we, we hope that we can do some recreation programming out there. And of course, our fisheries biologist keeps an eye on, on that property because it is one of our more dynamic close to home fisheries. Any other questions, Doug? Any motion to receive his report? Second. You vote and pass it unanimously. Any comments by trustees? Any citizens to be heard? You got something, Mike? You, <laughs> I can't tell whether you're wanting to come up or you're wanting to get out of the chambers. <laughs> it's a little bit of a tradition. I don't know, but I, I do. It's Mike Knopp of the Boathouse Foundation. I do think I, I, I would like to share with uh, you. Just lost the. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> with you, the an update on the river uh, rapids cleanup. Um, you mentioned the sand from the sand plant. <laughs> We've found plenty of sand in the, the rapids. So there's been a very significant cleaning effort that has commenced. We've drained the rapids as far as we can safely drain. If you, if you do get questions, there's a, there's a risk that you could float the concrete if, if you take too much water out, which makes it a real messy job because you have to get in there with waders. And so, um, so the whole entire pro, uh, uh, venue is being power washed. And then we actually had a big volunteer day where we had a lot of the community come out and bring their 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 uh, grubby clothes and <laughs> got in there and help clean as well. So there's a lot of work still yet to be done, and we're also going to be addressing the runoff areas and hopefully the filtration too. But uh, um, that's 
part of the dynamic that we have with Oklahoma and the wind and the red dirt. So, and then um, the surfing uh, machine has started construction as of this week, so that is underway, as well as the capacitors for the pump house. And the final thing I would share is we are uh, b being selected that we'll be one of three uh, places in the country for the USO to host their Warrior Week, where they will have a big event. Thousands of people will come to the Boathouse District in August. So we will get more details on that later, but we're uh, real excited about that. It's Chicago and Virginia Beach. And, uh, so thank you. All right. Thank you. Any other comments? We are adjourned. <laughs>